You know, people tend to operate with analogies like, um, uh, okay, this is just another CryptoKitties from 2017, right? The world has moved on. Chris Marzalek is the CEO of Crypto.com, an exchange, payments and lending platform dedicated to bringing crypto to the masses. Crypto.com released a study in February 2021 which showed that the total number of crypto users had increased by 60% since May 2020, finally breaking the 100 million user mark. Chris believes the stage is set for another explosion of crypto adoption. So it's really slowly, 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 but then it's all at once. And we are at this all at once phase. And there is a certain type of gold rush here. But with crypto users sitting at just 1% of the global population, can we realistically expect mass adoption to come anytime soon? This is another exclusive Cointelegraph interview with Crypto.com CEO Chris Marzalek. In a recent article on the Financial Times titled Bitcoin cannot replace the banks, Brandon Greeley criticized the crypto lending business. Despite their promise to revolutionize the financial system, he said, uh, what these companies do is just earn fees and interest on loans and manufacture fiat credit money, which makes them just another group of banks. As the CEO of a company that offers crypto borrowing and lending services, how would you respond to that? How is Crypto.com fundamentally different from just another bank? Yeah, I think that uh, the whole premise is, is quite wrong. I mean, the person obviously doesn't have a deep understanding of Bitcoin. Bitcoin does not compete with banks. It competes with central banks. So the, uh, this is the, the best money we've ever had. This is hard money. And it, it can't be debased. And this narrative, uh, Bitcoin becoming uh, digital gold, uh, has gained so much traction uh, in the last uh, uh, 12 months because governments around the world did massive quantitative easing with US leading the way. So I think the, this is just uh, um, uh, not the right question to be asking. Uh, that's interesting because in this author in the article, he makes the point that actually it's not just the central banks that... Uh, that manufacture money, as the crypto people are used to say, but also the um, actually the commercial banks are creating, manufacturing fiat credit money, uh, which is uh, apparently what you are also doing at this uh, at crypto.com. So would you uh, would you disagree with that? No. So everybody who is a, a lender essentially uh, uh, cre creates money. Right. Uh, in, in essence, you are increasing the, the, the money supply in the system. Uh, uh, but this is uh, completely different from from bank, central banks uh, yeah, uh, unilaterally debasing everybody. We're talking about you can't compare a, a commercial transaction when, when there is a borrower and a lender and one person, uh, the person who uh, borrows money needs to repay it eventually versus uh, somebody just increasing the overall supply. Uh, arbitrarily and uh, essentially um, uh, debasing everybody to the tune of like 20% a year. I, mean, I think those two scenarios are not comparable at all. Okay, so uh, in the same article, the author mentioned some of the flaws of the legacy financial system. He said that the, the supply of credit money can be unstable as banks stop making loans in a downturn right when people need them the most. There is little incentive to extend cheap credit to people who need small loans. He concludes saying that there isn't much so far that Bitcoin seems to have done to fix these things and it's not at all clear how it, how it will. How can Bitcoin and crypto lending fix those problems? Yeah, yeah I don't think that uh, Bitcoin is attempting to fix these things. Um, that's uh, that's not uh, what it's set out to do, and it's, that's not the the major use case. The major use case, digital gold, is store of value, is uh, is, is is money that can't be debased. And uh, and yes, there is an, a growing uh, uh, lending industry in crypto space, uh, but that's just simply uh, you know. A, a part of a growing industry where you know, people see an opportunity to generate yield and they, they view Bitcoin as, as, uh, as a fantastic collateral. So this is a growing segment of the market, but that's, that's not what Bitcoin is all about. The core mission of Crypto.com is accelerating the adoption of cryptocurrency. According to a recent study published by Crypto.com, the total amount of crypto users 
in January 2021 uh, globally reached 106 million from 66 million last May, last year. What are the main factors that, according to you, led to such a growth? How do you expect this growth to continue in the following months? And how do you plan to contribute to it? Sure. Um, so, um, obviously, there, is, uh, there, there are two trends that are converging here. One is um, with increased institutional adoption of cryptocurrencies. So you've got very large players coming out there in support um, uh, of Bitcoin and crypto, uh, like our yesterday announcement of global partnership with Visa. But there's plenty of other institutions that, uh, that get, got into the space. You know, PayPal allows people to buy and sell crypto. Facebook has been working for a long time uh, on their crypto initiative. Uh, there is just a, a whole slew of financial institutions that now are putting um, a certain portion of their assets into um, into Bitcoin. Um, so that drives quite a lot of uh, action. And on the other hand, you've got tremendous innovation in crypto space with things like uh, like DeFi and uh, recently NFTs, which uh, get people excited. And it, 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 it's obviously it's a cyclical uh, uh, it's a cyclical market. So we're now in a very strong bull run. So this also generates a lot of media attention and that drives people in. Uh, but it's a convergence of uh, of a few uh, trends. And I would say that the 2017 bull run was much more fluffy, if you will. Um, there were no institutions at the time because the infrastructure didn't exist. The projects that were launching at that time, well, you know, they didn't have real products or real tech. Um, uh, but this time around is different. You know, you've got tens of billions of dollars locked in uh, in DeFi. You've got uh, some of the world's biggest names uh, launching their, their NFTs. So uh, this is a much, much more solid uh, round this time around. And uh, the increasing participation of uh, of institutional money, uh, you know, increases the size of the market and also, you know, gives it um, uh, gives it more strength. So it's I think this time around is going to be more lasting. Okay. Now let's talk about the most the hottest topic of the moment, which is NFTs. You recently said that NFTs are going to play a big role in bringing the overall uh, number of uh, crypto users in the world to 200 million. Uh, so that's a, a pretty uh, strong statement uh, if you compare it to people in the traditional uh, media world that say that NFTs are just like a hype, a bubble that will actually just uh, burst very soon, while you say that uh, it, it, it will actually get the whole crypto space to increase to 200 million users. So why do you think so? Yeah, I think, um, you know, people tend to operate with analogies like... Um, uh, okay, this is just another crypto kitties from 2017, right? The world has moved on. Um, in 2017, there was no strong creator economy. Uh, you know, the, 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 uh, today culture uh, is led uh, by by influencers who are, who are just operating online, and uh, and this 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 is a perfect uh, this is the perfect time for NFTs to actually uh, go mainstream. And I think, you know, if you, if you look at some of the top celebrities who have 100, 200 million followers, 250 million followers, uh, if they come in and then they, they feel comfortable um, expressing themselves creatively with NFTs and they bring their fan bases over, uh, going from 100 million to 200 million is going to be much, uh, much faster than going from, you know, 50 to 100. I'm super bullish on the NFTs. We actually just announced uh, earlier this week uh, that we are appointing a senior music industry executive, Joe, uh, executive Joe Conyers, as our um, head of NFT. And you know he brings a wealth of these relationships and and his tasks with with bringing the biggest names in music, entertainment, sports onto our platform. And uh, we're just putting final touches on it. We will announce the launch date soon. Uh, but there's so much excitement around it and. And I think that, that this is the general trend in which the world is going. People do want to express themselves uh, with, um, uh, with, with virtual goods, digital collectibles. Uh, people want to own it to, to show, show the support and engagement. Uh, I don't think this is going away. Uh, you know, these things, um, they typically take a while. 
so it, it's a really slowly, 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 but then it's all at once. And we are at this all at once phase. And there is a certain type of gold rush here. And I'm sure that there's going to be plenty of things that don't work out. But out of all this creativity and innovation and investment that goes into this space, there will be a few very large platforms that are going to um, to, to drive the, uh, the adoption of crypto further. But now I would like to know more like a per your personal evaluation of uh, what NFT means to you personally, because I know that this is a very profitable sphere to be in right now. But let's see if you have like a deep conviction in uh, what NFTs mean. So a lot of critics, critics say that uh, art, art is something that you can touch, something that you can look at. And that's the pleasure that we derive from art. Well, NFTs are just like a bunch of numbers on a blockchain. And uh, that's why they cannot be considered like as, uh, as, 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 as as a piece of art. What's your opinion about it? Yeah, no, I, I, I think that couldn't be more far from the truth. I think um, one, it's a new medium. You know, you've got uh, you've got visual artists, you've got people who 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 put in new functionality into it. Uh, I mean, just I, anybody who is a critic of this, I encourage them to go to any of these marketplaces that are popping up every day and just spend, you know, 15 to 20 minutes just browsing. Some of this stuff has extremely uh, high cool factor, and I would love to own uh, a lot of them. Fortunately, most of the time they're all sold out. Um, uh, and, and, and this, um, the fact that, you know, if you have already a strong relationship with an artist or, um, uh, you know, or an athlete or, um, or an entertainment personality, whatever it may be, or a brand, if you have a strong uh, emotional connection with them, you know, your, um, uh, your willingness to, uh, to own a piece of it uh, is only going to increase. So uh, I, I just think that people don't appreciate the, uh, the, the creativity that, that the artists are putting into it. And, uh, and, and this is just a new way for people to express themselves. Uh, I definitely think, uh, you know, the, the, the media attention around this is going to pass, but NFTs are going to stay. So switching topic, uh, you recently launched a 200 million venture fund that will be investing in crypto startups. So what kind of projects uh, uh, will you be looking at for this uh, fund? Sure. So um, obviously NFT is one, 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 uh, one large area of focus. We've made several investments already that are not public yet, but they will be announced over the next couple of weeks um, and, and months. And you know, other areas that are very interesting are, for example, you know, L2 and and and, and how this uh, uh, you know how how projects tackle the issues of of scaling. Um, there's plenty of interesting uh, uh, innovations still in DeFi space. I mean. And these projects uh, have been were, were super hot, you know, mid last year. But there's still new stuff coming out, and and this is another area that we are looking at. Um, our approach is to focus on on seed stage and Series A. So we go in early, uh, and we want to lead these rounds. So we are not waiting for other guys to show up and say, okay, I'm going to lead, and we just tag tag along and follow. We want to lead these rounds. And typically, when you lead a round. When you have a, round, a, a lead for the round, it's very easy to line up all the other guys, especially if your lead is uh, a well-known name. So that's kind of how we think about it. I think the areas uh, uh, of, of interest are going to uh, to change and and uh, over over time. Uh, you know, as long as uh, as uh, this fits within our uh, broader mission of you know building out our ecosystem and driving the the adoption of crypto, we'll continue to invest. On March 25th, uh, you are planning to launch a public blockchain called Crypto.org Chain, which will have the CRO token as its native token. So ahead of the launch of the mainnet, you burned uh, $10 million worth of uh, CRO tokens in what you define as the largest uh, token burn in history. What are the motives behind this token burn? Yeah, so um, the the total uh, su su uh, supply of CRO was at 100 billion, and we've uh, announced a burn of 70 billion, which is about 10 billion dollars worth uh, at the time of the burn uh, being announced. And and again, you know, our uh, we believe in decentralization. I think uh, we wouldn't be um, able to credibly claim that this is the decentralized network uh, if uh, we control majority of the supply. 
so we just decided to burn it. And now we've got circulating supply at about uh, you know, 84 percent, and the remaining supply is simply going to be uh, awarded to uh, to people who produce blocks on the new chain and people who delegate uh, their stake to the block uh, to the validators on the network to keep it uh, secure. So I think this is just um, in line with uh, you know what we believe in, and we uh, we in line with you know how we view the future of. Of, of, of our chain and this industry. Okay, um, I think that was pretty much it. Chris, thanks a lot for joining our show. Awesome, fantastic questions, Giovanni. I really enjoyed it. That was Chris Marzalek, CEO at Crypto.com. I'm Giovanni, your host. If you enjoyed the interview, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel.